So I'm going to talk to you about target coordinates and ideograms. Um, our target coordinates, I know that you'll see us writing our numbers or stating our numbers. We've slowly um, slowed that down. And, um, and that's because we wanted to get you into what we're actually saying here. But the target coordinates are not for the for you all. The target coordinates are for us, for the for the remote viewer themselves. Um, they are random numbers with no meaning at all. I have had people um, say I put in the target coordinates to see if I could find it on the map. And it's not like a longitude or, or latitude type of thing. It's really just like twiddling your thumbs here, like people who fidget to keep their minds off of thing. The target coordinate themselves are, are like the fidget of the conscious mind so that your subconscious mind can get in all the information that there is. Anything can work. Um, you know, you can create your number here randomly or the target, the, um, the target itself is determined telepathically by the person who's analyzing the data in the future, comparing the remote viewing data to the target. So that's how we're able to do time cross. That's how we're able to do things in the future, like someone just asked. Um, and yay, my mommy's here. <laughs> but, um, that's how we're able to do those things in in the future the the tasker will is the person who looks at the information after you're done who's created the target so uh, you can do a session right now on your own and I can before you send it to me pick a target and it's going to coincide because your target was based on what I will look at after you've done your target. So that's what that means here. Um, and, and, and I have to analyze and compare the data. That's what the, the description is. If you're on a beach and you got that you were on a beach and blah, 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 and you were telepathically connected to me in that moment, I, I will be staring at whatever beach I'm looking at and you'll have those, those components. I'll say, okay, they should have water. They should have land. They should have you know, foliage over here, they should have this, they should have that. And then I will go look at your target and then compare. And that's what makes it work. That's how this works. Um, again, the target is created mentally by the tasker. The target coordinates simply distract the conscious mind while preparing the viewer to write an ideogram. And so, in ideograms, you'll see if you've been to our website, you see a list of ideograms and you've if you've done any of the drills that Courtney has on um, online or if you've taken my class, I see a few of my students in here. Uh, thank you guys for being here. If you have that, um, you'll you'll learn the ideogram and that ideogram itself is like a language, you know, um, and it's really the it's really just to get you prepared. So it's like distraction, distraction, distraction to the conscious mind, and your higher self sees this bubble and it starts to open up and it goes, shoo, it spits it out, and then you just that's where the ideogram comes from. There is no other purpose to the target coordinates themselves. Like I said, I hear that often. Um, ideograms are spontaneous drawings. They're not words. Uh, they don't have an inherent meaning like a word. They, they don't represent an, anything abstract. Uh, it just traces the elements of the target. Um, so if, if I have a structure, you know, target, is you're going to see something that's shaped, you know, like a building. You have something perpendicular. You, or if you have a peak structure, you might get a mountain ideogram here or there. And, and but it's tracing it out and so people go well I have a mountain ideogram so that must mean that there are mountains here no assumptions are to ever be made no assumptions what we do is we just allow it to say okay something that's shaped like this that allows me to understand across the board across any language that this shape means this is what happens 
um, structures, like I said, they usually have our right angles. So the ideograms will usually have right angles. Water usually have curves or waves. So you'll have your ideograms that have waves. You know, your ideogram, your water ideogram looks like this. I can probably draw it for those of you that have not seen it. Um, you know, quickly drawn, the water ideogram has, you know, that wavy look, the way we draw water um, in kindergarten. You know, not no fancy <laughs> artist here, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Land is usually flat. And so our ideogram has a, you know, a horizontal line that's very flat and subjects usually have heads and bodies. And so our ideogram, it's shaped, uh, it's shaped like, like you would see a person, you see a face and you see, you know, your body, your body right here. And, and, and so they're just very simple things that for, if you don't speak English, um, I have some students that, um, that don't speak English very well. You know, these ideograms are what helps. Okay. This is what's here. Well, okay. This will help me understand you and this will help you understand me. Movement is usually in one direction. So you'll have one going up this way or a movement going horizontal or a movement going downward in the direction that it is. And energetics usually has some sort of energy. And so it's just always going to be swirling about. You're going to see that you're going to see the cloud dynamics. <laughs> I can't draw either, honey. My stick people are like Picasso. My, my stick people, they're, they took practice. They took practice to get me this far. <laughs> so you don't have to be able to draw. I, I can't draw. And if you notice, if yes, J Mac, <laughs> if you notice that I don't use a whiteboard, you know, because I, my vision, my seeing is different than a lot of other viewers, I see through feeling, I see through emotion, and I, I'm able to verbalize that and put that out there. I'm a very emotional movement. I move through emotion. Um, and so you don't have to, oh, thank you. Yeah, my sick people are, are pretty great. I think they're awesome too. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's, it, just because it's energetic doesn't mean it's, phew, doesn't mean it's explosive. It, it, the, so the, the ideogram will usually just have chaotic movement. You'll see, let me draw that. Just so you can guys can, you know, you'll see a various amount of ways, you know, that the ideogram is shown all over here. These are different forms of, of the way our, our um, energetics would look. Sometimes it looks like that. You know, sometimes some people get a lot of things that looks like a lot of subjects in a row. I've seen them get that for energetics as well. And they go, oh, I have a whole lot of subjects. <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever because uh, I've definitely done that. But it's just chaotic movement, something that's choo, 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 all the way around. And and the importance of ideograms are are the closest connection to the target. Uh, spontaneous drawings sometimes will come right from one's higher self. That's, that's what it is. It's your higher self again saying, here's that window of opportunity. She's about to write those coordinates. I got half a second to get this in and your pen will take off on that paper. And, and that's when it begins. That's when you are now saying, Hey, here I am. I'm getting ready to go into this target. Let me probe this element. Um, this is why advanced scientific remote viewing, we spend a lot of time with ideograms. Um, if you've taken any of my classes, JB, ask that again in a moment. Um, don't forget, if you take one of my classes, the very first day, I usually will not get to a target because I want you to ask as many questions as possible. And I want to make sure you have these ideograms. I want, I want you to get the land immediately. I want you to get, to get your subjects immediately. I want it to just come out, just choo, 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 just come out and, and, and be drawn in a way where your higher self can help you physically interpret it. Um, the, this is different from other forms of remote viewing where ideograms are more like momentary stepping stones to higher level data. And then they get quickly abandoned. 
Um, this is not a, a criticism, again, of any other form of remote viewing. We just do things a little bit different here at Farsight. Um, than what others do, you know, um, that's why we have this, you know, we're not CRV, we're not ARV, we are SRV, which is, you know, we utilize the templates a lot different than, than other forms. And with advanced SRV, we tend to hang in there with um, ideograms a long time, just probing, probing, then doing flash sketches, then probing again, um, writing what do we get from every time we touch this ideogram something else might come back something else might be might be different and 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 we will probe for a very long time we will um so ideograms are a key element they're a key element of advanced srv uh it's not while it does not tell you the target because we have to interpret it, it's almost always correct. Um, I've had people get discouraged because their ideograms didn't match up or they, they felt the need to get different ideograms. Oh, I keep getting the same thing. Well, okay, well, I can't tell you why you keep getting the same thing, but you might be, you're getting the same thing because either one, you're decoding your ideogram wrong which I'll let you know if you, hey, sweetheart, let's find another way to do this. Or that's what's there. If you're getting a multitude of structures, you might be in a city. But again, never assume. Just say, hey, this is what I got. I'm going to go in. I'm going to probe. And I'm going to find out what's happening. I'm going to find out what's happening. Um, and some gestalts can be missing, which is why we continue with other elements of advanced SRV. Um, ideograms are low level data. They are, uh, and, and, and I will discuss low level data and how that works in another live stream. But, um, you know, ide ideograms, they, they are just that. Uh, keep, I, I always tell people to kiss it. Kiss what you view. And that is keep it short and simple. Keep it short and simple. And don't try to overcomplicate things. Don't try to say, I have got all these energetics. I am here at 9-11 and what I am seeing is, well, we haven't gotten that far. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't um, gotten that far yet. And, and so you just keep it short and simple. Keep it low level. Don't say I have energetics, this is a bomb. No, it could just be a lot of wind. It could be a, um, a tornado. It could be energy. I have learned that energetics is not always fast paced physical movement. I've learned that energetics are also something internal where there's a lot of movement within oneself. So I can tell if it's a highly, <laughs> I can, Yep. Keep it short and simple. Thank you, JB. You rock. Um, I can tell if it's a highly energetic, like something chaotic. I'll say, OK, this is very chaotic energy. It's a lot of energetics going on here. Just a lot of a lot of movement, that movement within our minds. Think of when you're scatterbrained. Think of when you're anxious about something and it's just that's energetics, too. And so it's about learning the steps of what these ideograms mean, not jumping to conclusion and understanding that the target coordinates themselves are just a distraction and you can randomly generate them. Um, I've seen some people in other forms of remote viewing use like a letter number system. Um, I personally use the, uh, the randomly generated target coordinate system that Courtney, Dr. Courtney Brown has on farsight.org. Um, and just remember that, that um, you guys just got my very first lesson. This right here, what I'm talking about today is what I teach and I hone in on and I drill you on day one of your courses in my classes. And um, again, I have classes. My classes, um, I start tomorrow, 
So <laughs> you might end up, um, you know, just email me if you want to have any questions or want to talk about anything. You might end up um, getting into my January course unless you hit me up quickly today. But um, email me again, princessviews at gmail.com. And we can talk about, you know, I know some of you use the uh, audio version. You know, I, I'll answer some questions here or there to the best of my ability. And, um, you know, and I just want to get you guys understanding. I know you are always watching. You're watching and you're like, okay, well, how does this happen? How does this happen? We start on paper. We'll start on paper and we'll do our session. And we have no idea where we are in for months sometimes we have no idea where we are and no i don't know when someone is remote viewing me but i am learning how to figure that out um i am definitely learning how to figure that out we um i i want to be able to introduce these things to you little by little so that my five-day course you can get as much information in that as possible I want you to be able to um, to go and practice and practice your meditations. I know you've seen my, my meditation video. Practice the meditation and then pick up a session and, and just try. Use our target pool um, at farsight.org and, and just continue to learn because this is one step closer to saving humanity. You know, the truth. Um, for those that don't know, remote viewing is the truth. It's finding out the truth of things unknown, you know, and, and now you, if you follow me, you hear me say that we have the ability to perceive beyond all boundaries of time and space. And this right here will teach you how to hone in on that. And, and, and with these steps and these meditation procedures that you see us going through here, I will be doing my next live should be a meditation video if you would like to come and meditate with me. I will also um, I will also be doing I will also be doing um, live meditations on my own that'll be guided meditations. So it may not always be the far sight meditation, uh, and you can find that at my Instagram. Um, so my Instagram will be dropped below if you if you will follow me, uh, Princess Views RV. If you follow me there, I will soon start to do live things. Maybe once or once a week is what I'm going for. So follow me, Princess Views RV, and um, I will be soon doing live guided meditations because I want to connect with you. I feel like everything happens in a divine purpose. And so if we're here together, then we're meant to be. And if we're meant to learn from each other, then we will. Once you've become a student of mine, you are then a part of my family, my spiritual family. Um, and I believe in divinity and that purpose. Michael says, how does one assign, how does one assign a target specific to target coordinates? It's enough to simply add a set of random coordinates below the description, which is the, tar the target specific and intent that is attached to it. I don't know if I understood that uh, the right way. There is no session or target connected to any target coordinate. Um, there is no session or target connected to, to any target coordinate at all. Um, and they are, they are random. So you can write down whatever you want to write. As long as I see it before, before I check your papers, then you're fine. Um, it's not a, this one belongs here. Numbers regenerate and regenerate and regenerate over time. There's no telling if numbers have been reused because it's randomly generated and so you not no one target no one target coordinate goes specifically only to one target it goes to your distraction of the conscious mind um, i'm definitely here for a q a now 
Thank you. Past, present, and future all happening at the same time. It is. So for there was an there was a question about uh, 500 years ago. Um, there are so many infinite lines of future, uh, of the future, and and it depends on what we do. So if we know the future, sometimes we have the ability to change it accidentally, and then now that future is no longer going to happen in that way. You know, think about it. I don't know if any of you've seen the Umbrella Academy. Um, you know, this. You know, there's a guy that jumps, and he jumped so far into the past that he ended up changing the his whole future. Like he ended up changing his entire future. And and I don't know what's going to happen next because that was the season finale. Um, and so all of that happens. Question. How, how to understand the reading after the viewing? I'll be able to teach you that. So the after the viewing, what you'll do is you'll, you'll, Take away all assumptions, right? And I wish I had a picture of something with me right now, but I don't. I don't even see anything nearby that I can use. Let's say you are remote viewing. Let's say you are remote viewing a mountain, uh, Mount Rushmore. Let's say we're Mount Rushmore or no, no, no. Let's do Mount Everest. Cause they have a lot of, they have a lot of temperature differences in that. And you go, okay, you'll see something and you'll say, okay, I have land. I have a uh, natural environment. I have steep peaks. I have Rocky. I feel something Rocky. Um, my ideogram was the mountain ideogram. So that helps it. It traces out the target. Um, if you got that, you're on target, right? It's cold, but also hot. Well, okay, that must be the summertime, but the top of a mountain is always gonna be cold. Okay, it's cold. Uh, there's, it's breezy. Some people say, I can't breathe up here. You know, how, and, and you'll look at that and you'll say data and data. This is my session, this is the target. Does it match? That's how you read it, does it match? Do I see the color blue? I saw colors of blue. How do I understand? But it's also better to have a second person do your tasking because that person can see with a clear mind. That person can see, can see the target without what you felt because you might have thought you were in outer space in a rocket ship, which is a deduction. You might have thought that you were in outer space in, in, in a rocket ship because you saw this peak and you were high up and you had were felt elevated. And now your mind has just ran crazy. We have to brush those away and the person in the tasker goes hell no you're right on target and you're like how I was in outer space this is a mountain well no you have look at what you have you have um, uh, a mountain you have a steep peak you have a, a figure that is shaped like this you have land you have coolness and so it's all about deciphering your after you look at your information comparing the notes and the data Do I have any other questions? Can I use this to understand my UF, UFO experiences? Yes, you can. You can use this to understand any experience. Um, again, most things are done in better in pairs. Um, teamwork, teamwork, it's better in pairs. So, <clears throat> because if you go in front loaded, that is, that will, that could cause some, you know, it's still okay to do, but that sometimes can say, oh, my mind can go this way because I know a bit and piece about this. And then, you know, it could disrupt some of the information you get, but it will also still coincide. Um, but if you have a partner where you want to know more, like Courtney, Courtney in this case will be my partner in this situation. And he says, okay, I want to know about, I know about the pyramids of Giza. I saw that up there written down that you just someone said, I know what the pyramids of Giza, I know this, I know this, I know this, but this is what I don't know. I want to know more information about this experience. Let me let Dick and Daz do this and see what information did they get. But they first have to come in contact with the verifiable data. 
They have to come in contact with things that everybody already knows that's out there. Thank you so much, Kathy. That's out there for people to already know. And then you, if they can connect with that, that means their information is more than likely going to be correct. And then you have another person doing the same thing. So now you have two to four people, you know, here at Farsight, that's how we do things. You know, so now you have two to four people that are getting the same information. Now, none of us see each other. We all work from home. We don't communicate. You know, we don't talk to each other personally. Um, and if we do, we know better than to talk about a target because then we can't get our work done. <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, and so I got the same thing. Melina got the same thing. Trudy got the same thing. Kamaya got the same thing. Well, okay, Courtney's going to say, well, if it's four against nobody at this point, they must be right. So when you, my friend, do something, um, get one person to, to check to verify your data with, to check it, to teach them how to remote view or send them to me. We'll teach you both how to remote view and let them do your session because you know the target and you want to go deeper into it and have them follow, follow the things you know to follow. We'll talk about that on another um, live stream. Can the future reveal, can the future reveal of the target affect what the remote viewer sees? Can the person creating the target affect? Yes. Yes and yes. Court, Dr. Courtney Brown has told me of one time he was working with somebody and they were talking about a session and the next thing you know, the tasker was so focused on a dusty bookshelf and the viewer immediately was like, I see a dusty bookshelf. And they're like, oh snap, got to focus. That can definitely happen. I've definitely been training someone <clears throat> and I looked at something and or my brain kind of got scattered and and I started thinking about, you know, I wanted to go to the beach and I started thinking about the beach and she was like, yeah, I see this and this. And I'm like, oh crap, let me <laughs> reel this back in. It's definitely happened. Um, can the future reveal of the target? Yes. Um, which you will actually see something like that very soon with our new coming mysteries. You'll see something that happened like that um, between all four of us. I won't give any spoilers. <clears throat> But you will see something actually like that happening in, in time. Um, and I just so happen to have been the culprit. So <laughs> I can't wait to see this myself. Um, next question. Universal creative force. I have come in contact with a lot of different forces. Um, some are not true in themselves of who they say they are. And so one day we'll see. If I am able to do that, I never feel alone, but don't know who is with me all the time. Am I possessed or remote neutral monitored or both? I don't believe that you're possessed dear. Um, <laughs> I'm also not a doctor. Um, I believe that we, again, some people, uh, th some people that are in this field, they are claircognizant. Um, clairvoyant, um, there's so many clairs out there where you can feel some are empathic and you can feel other people. Um, sometimes, you, you know, people can be anything in this point and you would have to find someone in a spiritual um, place to help you find out what that is with you. And if you feel like you're possessed, please go talk to somebody about that. Hi, Donna. Is there a way to cloak yourself so the ETs won't know you are there? Oh, wait, come back. It was a one away. Y'all are texting so fast. It seems like you are traveling there in your luminous body or double. Um, ETs can see us. Now, humans cannot. ETs have a way of cloaking themselves. Um, it's more of taking away blockers. Right. You know, they're, they are uh, uh, more advanced in certain ways. So even if I could cloak myself, I'm pretty sure they'd find me um, if I'm going to where they're going. You know, what I'm doing is I'm all up in their space. You know, I'm intruding on their space <laughs> when I'm going somewhere. So um, if they want to see me, they're going to see me. <laughs> but, you know, protection is always there. We are always protected here when viewing. Um, 
there is a, um, a farsight method that is used to break down blocking when they are blocking us from seeing them. But other than that, nope, there is not a way. But there is a way to cloak yourself in protection if you know how to do that personally for yourself using, you know, whatever form of spiritual practices that you have. A human target cannot tell if they are being remote viewed. If the person or subject being remote viewed is an extraterrestrial or higher being, they already know all. Our higher selves. Our human body is just a fingernail of who we are. We're so much bigger than that. And so our higher self is omnipotent. But we've separated ourselves from our from from our physical self and our soul self and our higher self all these things became separated and so this is a matter of bringing them together that's why i believe remote viewing is so important because it helps break down barriers within self it helps you learn No, RV is not spiritual. However, we are we are spiritual beings. You know, remote viewing is signed uh, SRV. I can only speak on behalf of what I am trained to talk on. Scientific remote viewing is scientific, but we as a people are spiritual beings every day. Um, if you go to our um, farsight.org, you will in SRV free. And you see, um, scroll down and you will see SRV affirmation. I'm trying to visualize the screen. <laughs> you will see SRV affirmation. That affirmation is the truth of, of what we are. It says, I am a spiritual being. Because I'm a spiritual being, I'm able to perceive beyond all boundaries of time and space. My consciousness is ever present with all that is, all that ever was, and all that ever will be. It is in my nature as a human to be able to perceive and thus to know all that there is to know. Everywhere at all times, I seek to learn and evolve to further my growth and to assist others in their growth. I direct my attention to a chosen point of existence. I observe what is there. I study it carefully. I record what I find. That, in a nutshell, is what remote viewing is. It is the act of being who we are, knowing who we are, and going to do what we know we can do. We know that we can do this because why? We are spiritual beings. We have a spirit. We have a soul. You know, we have, you know, and then we have our outer body shell. And so with that, we are able to transcend. We're able to move beyond all boundaries. Now, these other beings have ways to block them and we're doing our best to push through them because we want the truth, right? Yes. Um, you know what? Most people won't say that this is like lucid dreaming. This says, is remote viewing anything like lucid dreaming? Well, my mother called me one day in the biggest panic ever because she had just watched was it Insidious? No, 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 no. I can't remember the movie, but the movie with the dreams. Um, I hope she's on here still and she hears me. She'll type it in. Um, <laughs> there, there was a movie um, about, was it Insidious? I can't remember. There was a movie about um, uh, lucid dreaming and how to control it and how to switch it and knowing how. And she said, this sounds like what you do. Inception. There we go. My brain couldn't think of it at all uh -huh. yes inception she said this sounds like what you do and 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 she's like and she starts explaining remote viewing to the way she understood it through that movie and so i believe it is like lucid dreaming because in a sense i actually had a dream recently about remote viewing i don't know yet what it was about i will see one day soon but i randomly just sat down and grabbed a piece of paper and just started going in 
in my dream. And I've never had a dream like that before. And it was a very profound dream. So are they? Yes, yes. If you know how to lucid dream, definitely, definitely do it. Um, if you know how to, if, if you know how to, I am learning how to lucid dream. I've only done this stuff while I was awake. So I am now recently saying, oh, this is what's happening. Let me go explore. That's what I've been doing in my dreams lately. So if anybody here can help me on this lucid dreaming, please email me. <laughs> Let me look at some more questions. Do we have any more questions about what I talked about today? That is probably why um, when I, uh, Yaki, please let me know if I said that right. Um, he said, is that why my dreams are so vivid when I do your meditation? It definitely calms your mind enough to be able to see. And if you are already in tune with your third eye, if you're in tune with self, um, Trudy Ann, I don't know if she's told you guys this, but I, she has, um, when she first started doing our meditation, she would call me like every day. It was I just had this dream that was like, it was always so, so big. And I'm over here like that couldn't have happened in real life. She's got to be writing a movie. Like, obviously this is a movie. And it took me literally three years, like three years of knowing her to say, okay, these dreams are real. This is not a movie. <laughs> and so, yes, that, that, I believe your dreams will always become vivid once you start to center in with yourself. So any form of meditation, and this meditation is specifically to hone in and to, to silence your mind in a way where you can, to silence your mind in a way where you can, um, can move and can find. Oh man, do aliens get upset when I show up? Yes, they do. I mean, how would you feel if somebody just walked up in your house, didn't knock and started looking through all your stuff? <laughs> snooping for information and you looking at them like just stand. that's exactly what it, what's happening um i've had people try to block me i've had one guy he was very upset and i know you've seen me if you've watched some of my videos you've seen me go oh this guy's mad he does not want me here and sometimes i try to talk to them a lot of times um extraterrestrials are misunderstood just like we are and so they're angry because they're trying to figure out why we're invading their space but if you just talk to them they'll give you permission to stay. You know, I had one, oh, this had been a year or so ago, maybe two years ago. I had one, I could feel childlike energy. They were like little baby ETs, it was so cute. And they were playing tricks on me and I'm like, okay, you gotta stop. And I'm like, I'm not gonna hurt anybody. That's what I said to this, I'm not gonna hurt you guys. I'm not gonna do this. Um, and, and I said, but can I please see you? I wanted to know what they looked like. And the older, which I guess was like the mother, she felt very motherly, the older E.T. showed herself and then allowed her children to show themselves. Sometimes they just want to be spoken to because they feel like they're being, you know? Yes, I am going to be taking a, um, going to be taking a class with Lynn B B um, Buchanan. Um, Definitely. I've already talked talk to him about it. I'm thoroughly excited about that because it will be my first experience with controlled remote viewing. I very much admire him. I had the um, ability to see some of his uh, documentaries or not documentaries, but some of his um, he was on Gaia. And I got the ability to watch him and I was like, oh, wow, I want to meet him. <laughs> so, you know, I definitely look up to the people in remote viewing that come before me. Are there any good aliens looking out for the best interests? They've always seemed negative. No, aliens are not bad. I tell my son this all the time. There are just like there are good people and bad people. There are good aliens and bad aliens. There are good entities. There are bad entities. There are good ancestors. There are bad ancestors. Where there is darkness, there is light. Where there is light, there is darkness. 
We we're not just all I'm not just all unicorns and glitter and princess tiaras. That's not who I am. I have a shadow. So do so do other beings. We have to remember that they are beings too. So while there are horrible, they're misunderstood. Like I said, while they're mean and they can be horrible, there are some that are not. Oh, I can't be scared if I don't know where I am. No, I'm not scared because I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I can't walk in, oh my gosh, I'm gonna do something scary today. I don't know, I don't know that I've viewed an ancient God until I've done it. And then that's like a month or two later and Courtney's like, ha ha, you just met Jesus. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? So my after effect, I get overwhelmed. I do get overwhelmed. Uh, when I did War in Heaven, I was, huh, I cried. I was overwhelmed, you know, I, I, so I can't be scared of something I don't know is coming. Yep, my class is starting tomorrow, Diane. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? Ah, oh, thank you. Um, I don't want to mispronounce your name, but thank you about the lucid dream tip. Oh, in the dinosaur one, she seemed like, like family. She was very kind um, and very familiar energetically. Like I knew her. It was very um, hard to handle. <laughs> You know, I'm talking to these people, I'm bilocating and I'm talking to these beings. Um, yeah, she was, she was something special. Uh, it, it was very heartfelt, very, a very intimate energy. You know, she cared, she wanted to teach me. Like, I wish I could have stayed in that space and learned from her. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, here, <laughs> PJ, I love when people call me that. Uh, my, my, um, my website is almost done. Um, I don't know if she's here, but thank you, Stormy. Her name is Stormy Storm. She's building my website right now. She's dope. She's also working on my logo. Um, she's the sweetest thing. Uh, I think she's on a trip right now. She did tell me that she was one of my students and we became instant friends. This right here is where you can sign up for my courses princessviews at gmail.com. My classes do start tomorrow, um, so I will have a cutoff time tonight so that I can prepare because it's a lot of preparation to do group courses. Um, but if you missed the cutoff, you can also sign up for my January courses, which will be, email me and I'll be able to send them all to you because I have so many course dates in my brain right now. So I'll be able to send you information, princessviews at gmail.com. Casper, I thought of that. I really did. And um, I don't know how to find that out. Oh, my spirit just, <sighs> wow. So I'll take three more questions. And I think that'll be, you know, because um, I think I have 15 more minutes, maybe 10, 15 more minutes left. So I'll take about three more questions. And just remember, you can email me at princessviews at gmail.com. Also, I would like for you to follow me on Instagram. Says it's beautiful. You can just talk right into that beautiful done it. Yeah. I don't know. 
pure? I, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to try. There has been a time where I went back into a session after, like mentally after I knew what it was because I was talking about it. And I started to see more things that I didn't see during my session. And that was just me talking about it to somebody. So it's a possibility. Have I ever remote viewed Bigfoot? No. No, I have not. I feel like I know someone who has tried to. I don't. I cannot knowingly go into remote viewing myself in the future, but I can send someone else. My, what is my craziest experience? Did you, did, you, did you work your session first on paper or most on paper? We will, I will always start on paper so I can at least connect with it and then after that it's all live remote viewing. Angel, when are you, I remember talking to you. When are you taking your course? I can't wait. Craziest experience? They are, uh, they're all crazy. This, this shit's weird. Like, remote viewing is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come in knowing what remote viewing was. Like, most of you were like, ooh, I have been researching remote viewing for the last two years. I came in to Courtney saying, hey, watch this video. And I looked at him like, what are they doing? Um, <laughs> So, you know, all of my experiences are, are crazy. My, my, my craziest one, honestly, the dinosaur one was, was whew, I didn't know what it was. Uh, and my last one, I think it's going to be posted next week, which you guys will see. No, I don't ask Courtney to go anywhere. Courtney tells me, Courtney, I, I, Courtney just says you have a session. I don't know where I'm going until after I've done video. Now, I, there have been places I've asked to do, and he'll throw them in there in time, but he can't do it while it's fresh in my mind because I'll recognize it. Have to go in blind. During the Bashar session, there was an alien you interacted with that said you weren't entirely human or something to the effect. Could that be you incarnated? Hey, you know, he did say that to me. It was Bashar that said that to me. I recently went to a Bashar um, live stream and, and was able to communicate with him, and I thought that was amazing. Well, to, with Daryl Unk. I got to communicate with Daryl Unk, but it was unique to see them separate. Very unique. All right, I'll take two more. You guys have some cool questions. I believe they were... Good, good stuff. So I just want to thank you guys. I mean, I astral travel sometimes in my meditations, if you want to call that remote viewing. Um, I don't call it remote viewing. I consider that something different, doing it without my sessions. Pure, email me about that, please. You guys are saying some amazing things and I know I have to go soon. I think I have like a five minute mark. While I'm reading these to figure out which questions because they're coming so fast, remember, send me an email if you're interested in courses. Um, follow me on Instagram and all that jazz. Well, you can learn the basics of remote viewing, Felicia, in a few days. Now, how long does it take you to grasp it and understand it depends on you. I took and I, I studied remote viewing for nine months straight before I started doing really big things. My very first mysteries project was the Martin Luther King project. And I had been Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes on Tuesday, Thursday, if it was in the summer. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every single day, didn't miss a day from sun, almost sun up to sundown, you know, with hours directly with Dr. Courtney Brown. And he poured into me and taught me this. And that's what I intend to do with my students is to pour into you all the way that Dr. Brown poured into me. Um, and, and I, and I learned all the, the quirks and kinks that I knocked out 
um, <clears throat> that I knocked out when, you know, when I was learning. It was like, okay, that didn't work for me, but this is what worked for me. So let me teach both of these methods. You know, so I do my best. And every time I teach a class, I find a new method to, to teach. I love you guys too. Oh, can you follow me on Instagram? Richard. <laughs> John, you'd have to ask Courtney that. I have no clue. I was just as lost in the loop as you guys. Huh. I don't know, guys. You guys have some great questions here. Thank you, Dave. I just want to thank you guys so, so much for doing my live stream. I can answer questions all day, but I know Courtney has to edit this Lord knows how long video. Um, <laughs> and so I, um, I'm, I love seeing you guys. I love t communicating with you guys. I've always wanted to be able to communicate with the people that watched me because I was like, ah, these people get to stare at me all day. I don't know who they are. It was weird, but now I'm used to it. And, <laughs> And I'm honored to, to be able to meet you all. And for those who, um, for those who've taken my courses, I'm honored to have been a friend. And so thank you. And uh, uh, thanks, mom. So that's my mom. She said, thanks for inviting. This was interesting. <laughs> this is our first time seeing what I do. Um, I love you guys. And I'm going to do my best to scroll through it's so many to scroll through and, and type to you guys through my page and um, email me for courses and Courtney, they want to know the update on uh, the, the, uh, the stuff you had them do. They tell them to keep watching a mysteries project. The next mysteries is the reptilians and it comes out on the 15th on Tuesday. Put your email address up. <laughs> they said that uh, last, he said you will find out more information on uh, the 15th when he drops the rep, um, the reptilian one. <laughs> so there you guys. Merci. Thank you. You all are so beautiful. Merry Christmas. He said, ooh, try Lambda Delta. I like you. You haven't missed a single live stream. <laughs> yes, I love recognizing your names and being, and being able to connect with you guys as well. This is beautiful. <laughs> 